This week, we turned the sitting area of my bedroom into the perfect date night nook. Plus, we look at a few of our favorite maker videos of the week. So put down your tools, guys. It's time for a maker break. Welcome back to Make or Break, I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah, and this week we turned a boring space in Rob and Jen's bedroom into a mini media room. I was really looking forward to this project this week. When my family moved into this new home about a year ago, we all got bedrooms that were a lot larger than we've ever had before. And my wife and I got a master suite with this awesome little 10 foot by 10 foot nook on the other side of our fireplace. And we immediately had big plans for it. And a year later, we finally got around to it. While my wife gave the space a fresh coat of paint, I headed to the shop to prepare our materials. Now the TV wall would be made with rough pine boards mounted to a frame of two by fours. And of course, the TV would be mounted to this frame as well. And a small shelf would hold a pair of Amazon Echoes paired in stereo to a Fire TV cube. That way I can walk into the nook and say, Alexa, I wanna watch Mandalorian. And it would automatically turn on the TV, bring up Mandalorian on Disney Plus and set the ambient lights. Since I would be working two floors up, I gathered the tools I thought I needed, including my impact, my drill, drill bits, wood filler, some three and a half inch construction screws, my Milwaukee Brad nailer, a set of Irwin Forstner bits, and a skill laser level to help me keep all those boards plumb. Now the project's going to need a bunch of two by fours and about 11 one by six rough sawn pine. My wife wants the look of the rough side of the rough sawn pine. I personally don't care, and I was just happy that she chose the cheapest wood. I cut all of my 2x4s down to size and decided I'd had to cut the vertical pieces upstairs since our floor and ceiling are not, shall we say, parallel, and I'd have to measure each one. To attach the 2x4 securely to the wall, we used a trick my brother taught me. I grabbed a small Forstner bit to pre-drill holes into the long edge of the board like a pocket hole. Then we could use these long 3.5 inch construction screws to secure it to the studs in the wall. This let us set the boards off the wall by 3.5 inches, which would give us room to run cables and set up LED lights. I pre-drilled a few of these pocket holes in the shop and then headed up to the room where I'd do the rest after measuring. When I arrived, Sarah had set up our hard mobile work table, which is awesome. We've had this thing for a while, but never needed to move our work outside the shop before. And this thing was indispensable. The clamps easily held studs in place for drilling our pocket holes and eventually did the same for all of our vertical panels. After marking the wall up, we started with our first two by four along the bottom of the wall. The floor isn't level at all. This whole room was someone else's DIY project before we bought it and it shows. So we used the laser to make sure we were mounting things level instead of measuring from the floor or ceiling. Now it was important to screw these firmly into the studs in the wall, which shocker, were not exactly 16 on center. So we used this heart stud finder, which is really helpful for not just finding a stud, but finding its center. Now we have these two small vertical studs that we'll be using to mount the TV. So we drilled our pocket holes ahead of time on the mobile work table and then screwed them into the wall as well. Next, I attached our TV mount, which I grabbed from Monoprice a couple years ago. If you're gonna buy a TV mount, get one from Monoprice. This one is well-built, supports up to a 70 inch, 165 pound TV, has adjustable angles, and a nearly identical one at Best Buy is $120 right now. This one is 29. Next, we needed to drill some holes in the two by fours for cable routing. So we tried to use our heart hole saw that came with our bit set, but quickly realized it wasn't deep enough. Fortunately, we had some deeper spider hole saws that did a great job. Next, we started cutting our vertical boards to size. Again, this mobile tail did a great job of holding our boards in place while we cut them with a the circular saw. To mount the boards to the frame, we simply used our brad nailer and that worked great. I didn't wanna glue these up because I'm not totally sure the equipment and lighting we're using will be our final choice. After that, we just had to keep adding panels until we got to where the speaker AC adapters would go, at which point we'd use a Forstner bit to drill a hole and run the cable while it was still easy to reach. Then it was pretty much smooth sailing after that. Something I didn't shoot was building this shelf. I put it together down in the shop with some scrap one by six and made it five inches deep, 52 inches long and two inches tall. I painted it black and left it open in the bottom so I could screw it to the wall and leave space for a strip of LEDs as well. Next, we hung up the TV and got it all plugged in. Added a bit of artwork and yeah, it looked really good. For some ambient light, I bought these programmable LED strips from a company called Govi. They've been making a bunch of noise recently by producing some really high quality LED lights in a much more affordable price point. 
For now, I simply taped them in place with painter's tape instead of using the peel off adhesive from the back. I did this because I'm not completely sure this is how I want to run them yet. Once they were in, we could easily change colors, brightness, or run any number of fun color scenes, some of which gave me headaches. But most of the glowing ones are great for watching TV in low light. I also tore out the trim in this window and replaced it with a new top, which I leveled with some shims, and it looks a lot nicer now. After we added a bit of furniture and some more artwork, boom, look at that. And we're not totally done yet. I still am gonna add a wine fridge to the bottom of this bookcase, but for now, the space is beautiful. It's a great place for my wife and I to enjoy a movie, sip some wine, and pretend we don't have kids for a night. Okay, so that turned out really nice. It did, actually, it's way better than I hoped. Do you have a favorite part? Oh yeah, the TV wall and the lights behind it just really set the scene for those me, cool. but I'm way more excited about what comes next. Wait, what's next? So the same company that makes those lights go behind there, they also make this really cool kit that's still on its way that will go behind the TV and it adapts to the picture that's on TV. Okay, that's awesome. So if you're watching like a sunset, the lights behind the TV on the top will be the nice orange color of the sunset. Okay. There'll be water, there'll be blue at the bottom. It like awesome. mimics whatever's on the TV? It does. Okay, that's really, really cool. When yeah. does that happen? Not for a couple weeks, which is okay. a good excuse for you guys to get subscribed. So let's talk about our favorite maker videos from this week. Mine comes from Patrick Sullivan, who built his own large format camera. As a professional photographer and camera nerd, I absolutely love this build and greatly appreciate the detail. Super fun watch. So mine's with modern builds. This week, Mike, who's been working on a tiny house school bus for quite a while now, shared the plans for these really cool interlocking patio deck tiles that you can easily pick up and move. And maybe it's not a good idea for me to make these out of wood, but I really want them around a fire pit. You know wood burns, right? It does. Did you know that changing a light fixture into something much brighter and more modern is super, super easy? I do, actually, because I watched last week's episode, and you can watch that right here. I want to thank Heart for sponsoring this episode and reminding us that we can build anything we can imagine if we do it with Heart. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. All right, break's over. Let's make something.